So hey there, welcome back to Accelerated Investor. Hey, it's Josh Cantwell, I'm your host. Um, and today I have a fantastic interview with uh, one of my friends. His name is Chris Larson. Chris is the author of a book called Next Level Income. Um, and Chris helps professionals basically create and build passive income streams to achieve true freedom. Uh, Chris is a fantastic guy to talk to and listen and learn from because number one, Chris is going to talk to you about what he calls his opportunity fund and how to always keep your money working for you and earning interest through his opportunity fund strategy. Number two, you're going to hear more about some of the, the context and the information inside of the book. Nextlevelincome.com slash book is the site where you can get the book for free for my audience, both the book and the audio book. We're also going to talk number three, we're going to talk about Chris's strategy, which he describes in the book about his multi different pronged approach to passive income, including multifamily, self storage, mobile home parks, and car washes. Um, number four, you're going to learn what Chris's primary strategy is to make more save more and pay less in taxes. And then we're going to do a deep dive on car washes. Uh, we haven't really talked before about using car washes as a passive income strategy. And you're going to learn about three different types of car washes and some of the financial structure and the profitability that comes out of these car washes. You're going to learn about the express tunnel model. You're going to learn about the full service model. And finally, the self service model and the five different reasons why customers use car washes and how you can use car washes as a recession proof investment strategy and why it's still such a mom and pop business that's ripe for yield and ripe for profitability and how Chris is capturing passive income and you know doubling down on his diversification outside of multifamily with car washes. You're going to love this interview because we've never had someone like Chris on before. Here we go. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you're looking to retire early with forever passive income, you're in the right place. This podcast is the go-to destination for real estate investors, both active and passive, and multifamily apartment investors, both new, intermediate, and advanced. Now, sit back, listen, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So, hey, Chris, listen, welcome to Accelerated Investor, man. I've been looking forward to this for a while. I'll talk a little bit about your book and some of the opportunities that you're working on right now. So thanks for joining me today. Oh, Josh, it's my pleasure. I've been excited about this as well. And yeah, thanks for having me on. You bet, you bet. So the book Next Level Income is yeah. the latest book in your portfolio to talk to your audience and kind of tell your story about passive income, building income, kind of building out your portfolio. You have a very well-rounded portfolio, not only multifamily, but self-storage and car washes, opportunity fund. So um, what I'd like to do is to help our audience get a, a, a better understanding of who you are and what you do. Yeah. What, just tell us about the book. Like what's in the book? What will people yeah. learn when they read the book? What, what, uh, what are some of the highlights that you wanted to come across and kind of educate people on when you wrote it? Yeah. So Josh, you do a wonderful job with your platform, educating people, giving them a vision for how they can achieve financial independence. And that was the goal of the book. It was a little bit to tell about my story. Um, if you want to get a copy of it and you're listening today, you can get a copy for free. I'll send it to you nextlevelincome.com forward slash book, put your address and I'll send you a copy. Um, yeah, I talk a little bit about my story, um, how losing my father and my best friend early in life really kind of gave me this internal motivation to be financially independent. And what I realized was I said, hey, I want to live life on my own terms. I don't want to have any regrets. And the fact of the matter is in this life, in the world we live in, in the United States, you need money to do that. So if you don't have money, you're, you're always gonna have to compromise something, whether it's your time, time with your family, it may be, you may have to compromise ethics at work if you, you need a paycheck for some reason. And I didn't wanna be in that position. So I laid out a plan very early in college to become financially independent. I, I started in the stock market and I eventually, long story short, 
I bought my first piece of property at 21 and started in the residential side, but ultimately about 10 years ago, moved full force into the commercial side. Uh, we started in multifamily, as you mentioned, Josh, and we've expanded the portfolio now to include you know, self-storage, mobile home parks. Um, and uh, over the past six months or so, we've also started to acquire car washes as well. Got it. I love it. Um, so for somebody who, regardless of their age, uh, where that resonates with them, where um, they're compromising, maybe not going to every of their, every one of their kids, baseball games, basketball games, football games, volleyball games, they're compromising corporate that's sending them off to travel. They're compromising because they have to be on certain meetings at certain times. And there's other things they'd rather be doing. Um, what was it? What were some of the things that you did right at the beginning at age 21 yeah. that said, okay, I'm not going to compromise that you made the decision, but what were some of the tactical things that you did to actually make that a reality? Yeah. So I think first off, I think it's important, you know, whether you're an investor, whether you are an athlete, whatever it is, if you want to achieve success, you, you do have to make sacrifices. Okay. So I think it's important to note, like I, I, I won't say I never had to make a compromise, but what I did right was I made a plan early, Josh. I made a plan. I said, okay, this is a plan. Now my plan was buy enough single family properties. So once I paid them off, I'd have $10,000 a month free and clear coming in. And I don't know if that was the most efficient way. And that's, that's exactly why I wrote the book is to talk about how you can be more efficient and the plan that I came up with and I share now with people is first you have to make more money. You have to keep more of your money and then you grow your money. And I think that's one of the other things I did well is I went out and I found a career where I could become an accredited investor. And I'm sure a lot of listeners are familiar with that term, but accredited is a single individual's $200,000 of income or more. My goal was $300,000 or more. I spent 18 years in the medical device industry and it, I worked a lot of hours, um, especially when I was growing our real estate business. It was not uncommon. I probably averaged six days a week, 16 hour days for many, many years um, to do that. But um, I made a plan. I worked that plan. And I think, you know, the more money, the more capital you have come coming in makes things easier. Um, and there's, there's plenty of things I could have done a lot better as well um, over, over that period of time too. Yeah. Uh, it, it, my audience knows I've been recording this, um, this solo cast series around the nine traits of elite entrepreneurs. And one of them, which is actually rule number one, is to invest for cash flow now, now. right? Not to invest for equity now, but to invest for cash flow now, because yeah. the cash flow is yeah. what allows this financial independence to happen, regardless of how much yeah. equity is out there. You can't eat equity, right? Equity is on paper. You can only eat it once you realize it and sell off the property, which we don't really want to sell a lot of our properties off because we want to keep building the balance sheet and sell them sometime down the road at exactly the strategic time. So it sounds like that was something you were willing to do was I'm going to work in the medical device field, but I'm going to, I'm going to acquire these single family homes, move into multifamily, focus on cash flow not on flipping, not on equity, but cash flow. Um, tell me about that for you. Like, because there's yeah, always the, 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 the temptation when you have a property with a lot of equity to sell it, right? To, to oh, yeah. un unlock all this equity. Sometimes it makes sense to do that. Yeah. But for most people, it's just building the cash flow is where it's at. That's what yeah. allows you to have the financial independence to not have to compromise. So what were some of those decisions yeah. that you made to kind of just focus on cash flow, cash flow, cash flow? Yeah. So, oh man, it's a, it's a wonderful point. You know, you can't eat equity, right? You, and also the other thing I found, you know, I have, I have coaching clients, Josh, that make hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know what they say to me, Chris, I feel like I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I'm like, what are you talking about? You're, you know, you're, you're a millionaire. And they're like, yeah, but I got all this money tied up in my 401k. I don't have access to it. If they lost their job, they don't know what would pay the bills. And that's what I talk about. Like develop a plan where you have enough income coming in, enough passive income, cash flow coming in on a monthly basis to cover your expenses. You know, whether it's basic expenses, everything that you need now, or everything you need now plus some. I'm part of a mastermind and we call it the 200% club. Our goal is 200% passive income to, of our current expenses. So yes, cash flow is important. I write about chapter three in my book. So once you build capital, 
you need to put it into, I call it an opportunity fund, not an opportunity zone, but an opportunity fund, you know, a fund that houses your capital before you deploy it. And again, this is something I could have done better. Josh, I used high cash value life insurance, which I know you've had some guests talk about it recently right. on your show here. And that's a way where you can continually keep your money working. So think about this. You have cash flow coming in, but if you have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank over the past year, you lost, if you're to believe the government, 8%. I'd say it's probably more like 10 or 15% due to inflation. Today, we had the highest print CPI in 40 years. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, and that's, that is, um, we'll call it, it will be nice and call it an adjusted um, CPI, right? So you don't want to have, you want a lot of cash flow, but you don't want a lot of cash sitting there and doing that. So how do you balance, you know, keeping your equity at play in this income? And that's where I think we put something in place in our strategy. We call it the investment optimizer, which is basically housing your cash inside of a cash value insurance policy, where then you can deploy it when you need it. And then you can flow your income back into there and continually moving your capital. And, you know, an investor, I mean, you can, um, if you don't have that money sitting there getting eaten away by inflation, I think at a minimum, you can, you can earn a couple extra percent a year on your investment. Yeah. So I'm guys, doing that. the mechanics of that, because I used to actually sell that yeah. stuff, right? When I was out of college, yeah. my audience knows I was a financial advisor, series six, yeah. license, 21, 22 years old. And I sold overfunded cash value life insurance. Okay. And um, some of it went into the stock market. Some of it was going into the, the portfolio of the life insurance company. I work with Northwestern Mutual and I work right. with MetLife and I work with another brother. Yeah, great company. Wheatland, yeah. Some, of these, some of the big boys, right? And the whole idea there, the mechanics is put the money in. And if, if let's say it's earning an eight to 10% return roughly, regardless of what, whatever the investment vehicle is within the life insurance but you can then, when the when the right opportunity comes, borrow the money back out of there, deploy it into, let's say, a multifamily investment or a car wash or self storage, and uh, then when when that deal pays, oh, let's say you're you, you put it into a, a multifamily opportunity and that thing's paying a six, eight, ten pref on your money, you're getting that preferred return. You can then shove the money back into the life insurance policy, and the net cost of that is about 1%, give or take. Um, and so the money's still earning yeah, yeah. a positive return minus the cost of the borrow. It's really an amazing vehicle. I do it. We, I overfund a life insurance policy yeah, yeah. and have forever. Um, I've got an investor, one of our biggest investors that's got millions of dollars with us in our multifamily opportunities. We're always on the phone talking about, hey, I got to put 200,000 back in my, 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 uh, my overfunded life insurance. And then I got to, I got just got to do it once a year and then pull it right back out. Well, that, yeah. Um, so that's how that works. Well, so you mentioned this opportunity that that kind of is the opportunity fund, right? That's kind of the thing. That that's what we, yeah, that's that. what, yeah. And that's what I call in chapter three of my book. I talk about my, that's my opportunity fund, you know, where I house that. And you know, to your point, Josh, you know, it's, it's, it's setting up the structure correctly, but let's say that same coaching client, right? If instead of max funding his 401k, he funded his 401k up to his company match. And then he took the rest and he pumped it through one of these cash value life insurance policies. Now he actually has access to capital where he can create this income, right? And he has, he has flexibility. So let's say he loses his job. He can just go and grab some cash out of there, or hopefully he's already created that income to do it. So I think, I think that's a fantastic strategy. Something that I set up, um, my son's 12, we set up when he was 13 years old. But again, I didn't, I didn't do it exactly like I would do it now. And mm -hmm. we've tweaked some things. I use a line of credit now. So it, it lowers my cost of capital even further, makes things a little bit more convenient. And hey, if it's more convenient, you're probably going to be more likely to do it. It's going to be more efficient. Yeah, I love it. Now, one of the things that I was really interested in peeling back the onion on, Chris, because yeah. um, we've, we've talked a lot about multifamily, of head self-storage guys come on, and we've talked about syndications, but you started yeah, yeah. to diversify into car washes, right? And these car washes, like I get my car washed, it's completely automated. Like there's, oh, yeah. really, there's, there's this multi-million dollar machine washing the cars. And there's one person, guy or girl, usually a young person in their early to mid twenties, just kind of hanging <laughs> out, making sure nothing breaks, saying hi. Oh, you put your credit card in. Oh, do you want to upgrade? Do you want to do the monthly plan? And I'm like, this is a multi-million dollar business with one employee 
So help me understand your play into car washes yeah. and let's talk about a deal. So my, my, my audience can understand yeah. the structure of acquisition cost. Is there value add opportunities? What, what optimizes a car wash net free cash flow? Cause I'm interested in learning more about this for myself and seeing what, what is, what, how can I diversify into that uh, as well? So tell me about car washes. Yeah, so you hit, man, that was the perfect intro because you touched on a few different things here. So I'm going to go through them sequentially. So first off, you mentioned value add, Josh. My book is about adding value just like you do in multifamily real estate. But as you know, you can take the value add strategy. It's, it's a Warren Buffett strategy. It's a Benjamin Graham strategy of investing, finding value in businesses, right? And you can do the same thing in multifamily. You can do the same thing in self-storage. And yes, you can do the same thing in car washes. Now, I think it's really important to note before are a business first and foremost. Yes, they have real estate, which is usually about a quarter, maybe a third of the value of that business, which, which we love real estate. We also love the depreciation from the equipment, right? So you, you, got, you get to maintain that. Um, so that's, that's something important to note. Uh, it is a business more so than real estate. That means there's more levers to pull, more knobs to turn, more inefficiency that are out there. Also more things to screw up if you got the wrong operator, right? So um, first off, you mentioned the express tunnel model. So you have, you know, one, maybe one up to say five employees, but yes, these tunnels are typically at a minimum about $3 million to build. They range in size from hundred feet all the way up to, you know, our largest tunnel that we have is 165 feet and, you know, you can run it very efficiently and, you know, our generation, people like it because, you know, if you go back a generation or so people like other people to do stuff for them. They get out of the car, you know, they do a full car wash. So you have the express tunnel model, you have the full service model. That's where you drive up and you have a team of people that are cleaning your car. And that's nice. It's, you know, it's like getting um, a prof it's a professional car wash it takes a little bit longer, you know, but if you're a retiree and you know, this is your weekly routine and you get your Cadillac clean, like my grand great, uh, my grandfather did that he renewed his lease every two or three years. That's like a weekly ritual and made him feel yeah. good. And that's an important point I'm going to get back to is feeling good. Then the other, the other model is the self-serve model. So when I was in college, I raced bicycles since I was 14 years old, kind of on and off. And I'd finish a mountain bike uh, ride or race, or I'd, I'd finish a race. I had my bike on the car. Well, you can't drive through one of these automated washes and some nod their head say, yeah, they wouldn't let me through with my bike rack on or my roof box on. So you go to the, one of these self-service and you, you do it yourself. You put the quarters in, which is a real pain in the butt. Some have credit cards now, but they're also kind of eyesores because they got like, you know, six, 10, 15 bays, right? Mm -hmm. So cities don't like, like these a lot, um, but you don't have any employees. So they're nice, right? They're, they're nice. Um, but when we looked at the model, the majority are these express tunnels when it comes to profitability. You can have high profitability. You don't have to have the, as much overhead with the employees. Um, and you can really, um, we'll say, exploit the membership model, which is what you mentioned, Josh. So if you say, okay, um, the, the focus is going to be the express tunnel model. How do you add value? So the first way you add value, real simple, is increase revenue, right? Well, we love going in and, and putting five, 10, $15,000 a door and increasing rents, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month in, in our multifamily properties, wonderful strategy, but it takes, it, it can take a couple of years to renovate all of those, sure. all of those units, right? You can go in and just for an example, we bought a wash and we sold, um, we bought it. They had, uh, about 600 memberships, you know, we, we sold as many memberships as they had in a year in six weeks. So you can go in and you can teach a team, you know, a small team with very simple sales skills. And this is coming from somebody that spent, you know, a couple decades in sales, very simple sales strategies. You treat them well, you may pay them a couple more dollars an hour, or give them some bonuses. So that person that's standing there at the, at the card reader, as you mentioned, Josh is saying, Hey, Mr. Cantwell, it's nice to see you again. You know, I know you've had your car wash twice this month. If you got the membership, you would actually save 10 bucks this month and you can wash it as many times as you want. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's called monthly recurring revenue MRR. And that is a wonderful thing to have coming in because if it rains, like it did here in Asheville, North Carolina yesterday, people probably aren't going to get their cars washed. Hey, guess what? We still get that recurring revenue coming in. So right. I'll pause there for a quick second. Yeah. So if it costs 
three million bucks on the on the low end decided to build an express tunnel wash. Yeah. And the city is supportive of it because it's not an eyesore, kind of fits in with the other single tenant yeah. retail, like an Arby's or a McDonald's. It can, you know, it kind of kind of just fits in to the exactly. landscape structure and the architecture of a of a busy road. Yep. And you put an express tunnel model in three million bucks. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. What what level of membership is kind of the break even, if you will? Um, How many memberships? And is that really the goal? Like build it and get memberships to X number. And then anything over and above that is profit. Is that how you look at it? That's a good question. So it, it depends. There's a lot of variables that go into it, but the I think the thing that'll really kind of highlight is the the profit margins on this are about fifty percent on these washes. So you know you can you can kind of base it and say, hey, if we're selling a thirty dollar wash or thirty dollar membership, and it costs us, and again, three million dollars, you're probably looking at five million dollars, maybe even as high as ten million dollars for these. But you know if you're generating you know an extra hundred memberships per week. That you own one of these, you know, let's say three thousand dollars a week, you can increase your revenue, say one point five million dollars gross in a year. And if your profit margin is fifty percent, that's seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? So right. you can, yeah, you can uh, you can do the math if you're if you're paying five million dollars and you get seven fifty um, a year just from that'd be from zero, right? So these and then it grows over time, so you can continue to grow that membership and grow that membership, and it becomes um, extremely profitable. And so a guy like me, right, big multifamily portfolio, yeah. kind of the backbone of what we do and will always probably be yeah. um, the steps to getting one of these started, right? Yeah. To find out like planning, zoning, commission, figuring out where they're willing yeah. to put one of these. Is there a feasibility yeah. study done to determine what the other competition is around, if there's room yeah. for one of these? And then finding the right size lot and a builder. Are there like franchise builders that kind of that's their specialty is building these express tunnels. Tell me about a little bit more about like getting off the ground. If I had you know, yes. the appetite to build one of these three yeah. to $10 million facilities, which I sort of do, where, 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 where do I begin? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about operations and the challenge with operations, because that'll answer a lot of these questions. And then the strategies for acquisition and disposition, if that sounds good. So first off, operations, again, a lot of levers, right? We have an engineer that run, that's our director of operations for the car washes, mechanical engineer, also actually has a civil engineering degree as well. Um, and they did a lot of chemical like impregnation for um, uh, medical. That's important because this is a mechanical and chemical business you can increase or decrease your cost of chemicals. You can decrease your cost of chemicals 50% just by making sure you have the right dilution rates, the right spray angles, the right nozzle tips, all these things. Are you spraying it at the right time? Because think about it. It's like a symphony when you go through one of these washes, Josh. You're like, okay, the water's coming in, the guy's spraying my bumper, and then the pre-wash comes on, and then you have the soap soap come on, and then you have your tires wash. All that stuff, think about it. If if something's spraying your car for 10 seconds and it's on for 10 seconds or five seconds before you get there and five seconds after instead of just those 10 seconds, that's that's 50% wastage, right? So you can decrease that massively. Also, you can increase and decrease the conveyor speeds, the distance on the conveyor to help adjust for timing when people go through. People want to feel good. I mentioned my, my grandfather wanted to feel good about his car, right? People want to feel good. Quality is number four out of the top five when it comes to these washes. People want convenience. They want value. They want consistency, you know, and they want to feel good when they go through these. So operations are really important. We looked at how, how can we do this? And what we found over the past 18, 24 months is that you can work with a franchise and, and get one of these started. Um, you can 
you can go buy a current operation and, and bring their operating team along with you, but there's really not a lot like multifamily, Josh, we got great options. We can go, we can say, Hey, we're going to interview these three property management companies, right? Mm -hmm. You just don't have as many options in the car wash space. So we built our team from scratch. So if you want to do it at a small scale, I'd say probably the easiest thing to do is just go buy one that's already in place and then see how you can improve operations. You're going to learn a lot. If you want to build one from scratch, you can certainly do that. But I'll tell you what, we, uh, we've bought, I think, three or four um, brand new car washes here just in the past four months from from operators that built them and were like, you know what, I just need, I want to sell it. Like this isn't as, you know, this is a lot harder than I thought mm -hmm. to get going. So I think probably buying one that's already built or working with a franchise makes sense for a small operation. Now here's why it's exciting from a larger scale. So the largest operator in the United States has like 3%, two and a half, three percent 3% of market share. The That's international it. standard, correct. The international standard. That's it. The international standard for a major player in a market is five percent or more. There is no single major player in this market. So what does that mean? There's a lot of opportunity at today's demand. It's going to take 15 years to build out express tunnel washes. 15 years. The major you mentioned. One of the things you said, um, the major concern when we look at sites or when we look at current washes is how close is the competition? Sure. Dilution is the major. So as long as you don't build one of these on top of another one, you're probably in pretty good shape. So we can buy these at around an 8X multiple of EBITDA. And by packaging them in a portfolio, you can sell it at 12 to 15X multiple of EBITDA because you can sell to a larger group or a private equity group. Now. It's like, well, okay, why wouldn't we do this all day long? Um, the answer is we're trying. We're, we're looking to grow our portfolio to 100 to 150 here in the next two to three years. Um, the opportunity is that, and this is why I mentioned probably the, the easiest thing for you to do, Josh, is go look at buying one. 15% of the market is controlled by the bigger players. 85% of car washes today in the United States are owned by operators that own less than five. So we'll call them mom and pops, right? And they're making great money. One of my coaching clients, they had two, they were killing it. They're making three, $400,000 per location. So they don't really have the same incentives to, to optimize and turn those levers. And also maybe they don't have the investment to upgrade all their blowers so that, you know, your car is a little bit drier and the, and the customers feel better when they get out or their, or their vacuums or like the micro fiber cloths. Maybe they don't have, you know, the capacity to do that, or they don't get the deals that we do because they don't have the amount. Maybe they can't put the technology in place. Um, we overlay mm -hmm. our multifamily and our co-star data. I know you know what co-star is. It might be a little inside baseball for some people with some of this data as well to determine, hey, what are good sites? What are good locations for these? So we take all that, that combined with our investor base, and we've built a model to go out, acquire, like I said, you know, over a hundred of these locations here. We're on number 17 in acquisition um, roundabouts since we started this year. And um, our brand is called Hurricane Car Wash. So be on the lookout for it. Oh man, that's phenomenal stuff. So one last question regarding the, the, uh, the structure, the, the tactical structure of, a, of the car yeah. wash. Is it similar to multifamily, bringing in limited partners, having GPs, sponsoring a loan, uh, paying a pref return, and then yeah. trying to refire or sell? Help me understand what's the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, very similar. Again, it depends on your exit strategy. So if you're looking to exit as a portfolio as we are, it's going to be a little different strategy. Um, but yes, you can, do, you can do the same structure. It's, um, I'll say it's a little more, more complex you know, with respect to um, the waterfall. The other thing is, you know, one of the reasons I, I love moving from residential to commercial real estate is, and, and bear with me here, is everybody's in a suit right? Like you work with professionals is what I'm saying. Right. You know, people are professionals. When you're buying from a mom and pop that maybe they're not accounting properly, you know, and it's like, it takes, it can take weeks to get a proper um, purchase and sale agreement completed. Just it's, it's a little bit dirtier. It takes a little bit more work to get these deals done. Sure. Um, but again, that's where the opportunity lies in my opinion. And is, is, is the acquisition come from 
finding the commercial data of the existing mom and pop owner and going direct to seller because I don't necessarily see a lot of business brokers or, you know, brokers, commercial brokers like a Marcus Millichap or a Colliers or a Newmark. Yeah. Do they list and sell car washes? Or is this a lot of um, the, direct to seller because you're they're going more? To- yeah, you're going to deal more with a business broker, right? Um, and then you also asked about like, you know, commercial con- construction companies do these as well. And there's certain ones that, that focus on it. So yeah, it's, it's really, it's a similar model. Obviously it's a little bit different. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, is Subway like Chipotle? Yeah, but they have their own, you mm-hmm. know, their own different, you know, intricacies and, and different things um, that do that. But if you look at, if you zoom out and look at the model, you know, it's like Blaze Pizza, Subway, Chipotle, it's all built around, you know, kind of the same, you know, basic concept. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So Chris, as we kind of round third here and head for home, I'm curious to know, as you look back on your journey, your entrepreneurial journey, your investing journey, what are some things you think you got right that you would kind of convey back to your coaching students or my audience and say, hey, I did this right. You guys should really look at doing this. And then what are some things that you think that you would change or do different if you could redo the whole journey again? Yeah. So I think one of the things I mentioned earlier, Josh, you know, building a plan and sticking to that plan, like real estate's not a get rich quick game. It's a get rich slow game, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I like that from an engineering perspective. I like that there's predictability in that. I think I got that right. I think I got um, like, I'm still doing the same quote unquote value add strategy that I started with, even though that was in residential um, over 20 years ago now. Now, what I think I should have done earlier is I should have gone and found a mentor. And if you're listening and you want to go do something, um, Josh, I know you have a wonderful program. Find somebody after you decide on your strategy, what makes sense for you and your personality. Real estate makes sense for my personality. Going sleepless at 3 a.m. thinking about stock trades was not, that's not good for me. I knew that. Um, but I, I wish I, I found somebody. And now, now I have a coach. I've had a coach for years now. And I, I coach others because I think it makes you, it makes you better, it makes you sharper, um, and it keeps you learning. And I would have done that much sooner. I try to do a lot of things myself. I learned a lot. I think it you know, ultimately benefited me, but ultimately it slowed me down. Yeah, I love it. Chris, listen, this has been fantastic learning more about your journey, your opportunity fund strategy with overvalued life insurance, uh, the diversification between multifamily, self-storage, and car washes, and of course, your book. Again, guys, my audience should pick up the book right now. It's nextlevelincome.com slash book. Uh, Chris will give you a free copy of the book and audio book there at that website, nextlevelincome.com slash book. And again, we just in a half hour here, try to pull back the onion on some of the things that have worked for Chris, certainly a lot more you can learn diving into the book. So Chris, listen, thanks for jumping on the show today. And thanks for sharing with us. Josh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, hey guys, listen, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Chris Larson as much as I did. I really enjoyed talking about a different type of strategy, a different type of passive income model and hearing a little bit more about Chris and his car wash play his mobile home park play, his multifamily and self-storage play, the opportunity fund that he talks about with his overfunded life insurance. Really, really enjoyed all of those discussion points. If you enjoyed the interview, go ahead and smash down on the subscribe button. Subscribe today to the podcast, whether it's on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. Make sure you subscribe, number one. Number two, leave us a rating and a review. And number three, make sure you share this interview all over social media to share the word about Accelerated Investor. I appreciate you being here and we'll see you next time. You were just listening to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, help us build the AI community by leaving a review and five-star rating on our iTunes podcast channel. Also, Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another episode. To see passive investing opportunities, visit freelandventures.com slash passive. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of with multifamily apartments, apply for one-on-one coaching with Josh at www.joshcantwellcoaching.com.